Hello there everybody, it's 101 here, and this is my almost completed CPU. Um, it's, well, some of you with a keen eye may have noticed that it's changed slightly. Well, for starters, above each number, I have a copy of the binary number, which dictates what's displayed on the screen, basically. It's the input to the decoder. Now, main addition since last time is, I ignore that, that's just a fake, uh, tried making a register, which worked out actually, it's pretty good. Anyway, this is the main addition. This decoder here is for decoding functions for the ALU to perform and this here is the ALU. It's rather large, a bit bulky and performs 12 different functions. Add, subtract, XOR, XNOR, AND, NAND, OR, NOR, left shift, left rotate, right shift, and right rotate. Now, my shift and rotate functions are a bit of a cop-out, really. They're just a wire going to the next variable and an enable, which is also, by the way, the invert and the convert to subtraction line. Those of you who do this sort of stuff will understand what I mean. So, my ALU is not particularly flexible. However, it is built using zipistons, as you can see, and this makes it very fast. I also used instant ripple carry. I found this uh, adder design on the internet, had to modify it slightly to stop the pistons from dropping the blocks, but still I've done a fair bit to it, and I think it's almost, well, mostly my design. The instant ripple carry, I don't know who came up with that, but it's a brilliant idea. basically makes ripple carry very, very fast by using pistons to block the current to the next unit. So, yep, I am now going to give you a quick demonstration of the different types of logic gates which I used, also made using pistons. Uh, here is an XOR gate. It's very compact, and the usual problem with XOR gates in Minecraft is they take two or three, maybe four ticks to run. Now, this one performs its operation in two ticks, very nice and fast. Now, I put these little delays here because, as I shall now demonstrate, if you have a single tick, then you can do this. And said piston will drop its block, meaning that this is permanently one, which is a bad thing. However, if you make that two, then there is no way that you can make it drop its block, which is good. Uh, it basically prevents errors. Um, so, I'm going to now demonstrate to you how it works. Well, an XOR gate is on if the inputs are different. So, the inputs are both zero at the moment, so the output's off. But if I make one of them different, then it comes on. If the other one different, it comes on. But if I make both of them on, then it goes off. Um, why is this useful? Well, you can use that to uh, tell whether two binary numbers are the same or different and such like that. Bitwise logic. Google it. This is an OR gate. Don't need to talk about that, it's just a wire. This is an AND gate. Now, this one is rather ingenious. I actually modified it from this adder I found on Zinet. Uh, how it works is it uses, again, piston to block the current and repeated to stop the piston from dropping this block. However, it's designed in such a way that this current can only get through if this current is high as well. Of course, if this is low, then there's no current to go through, so it stays low anyway, which means you can use it as an AND gate. One input on, nothing. Other input on, also nothing. If I switch both on, the output comes on, so it's a nice AND gate. I know that you need this, but for, like, I don't know, I'm not sure. I've added all of these functions to my LU, I'm not completely or entirely sure what any of them do, but all I know is that they're useful, and this is, this is an OR gate. It's just a wire, nothing special there. Now, up we go. I am now going to demonstrate addition and subtraction on this using my newfangled ALU. It's probably, well, I've recorded this twice now, it's bugged out before. So, yeah. First, I'm going to do addition. Now, I'll run down here, punch out the invert torch, so it should do addition now. I'm going to do two addition sums. I'm going to do some random one. Let's have nine. Actually, no, not nine. Let's have eight plus one, and that should be nine. So I'm going to run the program. It's going to take a little while to run, and while that, I'm going to tell you how my sort of user input system works and why it's a bit flawed. Well, okay, while that's doing that, my user input is basically just a big multiplexer on a pair of inputs that goes straight onto this data bus here. Uh, if I'd used memory mapped I.O., I'd be able to memory mapped I.O., that is to say that these are, well, can be addressed as locations in memory, I'd be able to perform everything considerable amount faster. So, there we go, that's a 5. Why is it a 5? Oh, wait, I'm an idiot. I did 4, because that's the 4 bit there, 
add one, which is the one bit there. So I got a five instead of a nine. Sorry. It's a problem with me, not my computer. My binary skills, they suck. Now, as you can see, that worked. Now another sum. Now this is a worst case scenario sum. You'll never have this in real life. Well, unlikely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch all of these first ones on. Ah. Perhaps killing my frame rate here. So have I done that? And I'm going to switch the first one of the next one on. What this does is it means that the carry from this goes into this one, carry from that goes into this one, and so forth, all the way down until you get just a one at the end. And this basically means it, well, it's a worst case scenario for ripple carry adders because there's usually a delay with each carry. However, my adder here, using this design, which is epic, will do the same thing in exactly the same amount of time. No difference. So I'm going to start the clock. Now, for those of you who don't know binary, what we should see here is 8,000. Of course, it's not actually 8,000, it's a, it's a different number. What you'll see along the top to tell you that this has worked is a 1 and then 15 zeros. So, we shall wait for that to run. Let various input values be saved. Hold on. I'm sure it will happen eventually. Ooh, lags. Okay, 8,000. There we go. One zero 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 zero, and it doesn't exactly the same speed, which I'm very, I'm very proud of actually. So yeah, now on to subtraction. Now this is a buggy one, I'm afraid. Uh, has a few bugs to work out before I can release the save, but and I will release the save, believe it or not. Believe it or not. Yes. So let me flick all these switches. There we go. Now I'm gonna go put that torch back in. It's the one one one. Okay, it's this one, I think. Forgive me if I get this wrong. Right, so it's going to subtract this top line from the bottom line. So I'm going to input a 9 on this line. This is actually a... An, it's not a 9, it's an 8, you div. Sorry. So it's an 8 and a 1, so that's a 9. I'm going to subtract 2 from that, so the output should be 7. So I'm going to run that again. I'm going to sit here and we're going to wait for 10 seconds while it subtracts 2 from... 2 from 9. <laughs> Terribly impressive stuff, this. Just uh, clock that. Have that erase itself. Gonna have to wait a moment. It's not particularly fast. As I said, I could speed it up by using memory mapped IO for my inputs, but gah, too lazy. Zero 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 eight. Why eight? Okay, what did I do wrong this time? Eight. Add one. It says nine. Take two. Should be seven, but it's eight. Um. So yeah, I've redone it. Now we're waiting for it to finish. Just right now. Should finish round about now. I hope. Please, don't bug out on me again. There we go, there's a 7. Okay, it worked this time. Very happy with that. Now, yes, it's not particularly impressive if it keeps bugging out like that. But oh well, oh well. It'll be sorted out by the time I release it, I promise you guys. Now, next week... Once I've sorted out conditional branching, I will be uploading a video on it performing a more complicated uh, program, such as division or multiplication, so that we can have a nice... Oh, another sum that's not quite as simple, <laughs> put simply. No pun intended. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and yeah, I'd hope like you to drop a like, maybe subscribe if you like my creations, I keep doing this sort of stuff. Yeah, see you guys next week.